This is a couple of old nomographs, or nomograms. Each one is a weird chart. Usually it's got three scales on it. This one's cardboard, made by Shell. And this one is plastic, made by Honeywell. The idea is that each chart like this is used to solve a specific equation in three variables. These are made for people who needed to do one specific computation without using a calculator. Nomographs are pretty great, but nowadays almost nobody remembers them. Just for fun, let's make a nomograph that does addition for numbers 0 to 10. I'll make three parallel lines at equal distances and mark off my scale on the outer two. The idea is the two numbers I'm adding will be on the two outer lines and the answer will be on the middle line. Now if I drew this right, then you can add the two numbers on the outer scales by connecting them by a straight line, and that line is going to hit the middle scale on the answer. Check it out, like 4 plus 9, you draw the line from the 4 to the 9, and it hits the middle at 13. So the middle line adds the two on the outside. Technically we say the nomogram is finding solutions of this equation with three variables. That's pretty sweet, and it's easy to make, right? Hey, let's try to make one for multiplication. I'll make the two outer lines again, and this time I'm just going to label the middle one with the products instead of the sums. Actually, that's not really going to work. Like here, 2 times 8, that should be 16, so I'll mark that as 16. But that same point also connects the 3 to a 7. 3 times 7 is 21, though. So I guess maybe I just got lucky with the addition one. Turns out generally it's pretty hard to make nomographs for other types of equations. These things were first invented in the late 1800s by a French engineer named Philbert d'Ocagne. Apparently he was in charge of workers doing cut and fill for railway construction. You want to level it out by digging out hills and filling in valleys. It's pretty complicated, especially in three dimensions. Phil made some nomographs so that his diggers wouldn't have to do any calculations in the field. They could just pull out their charts and line up some numbers and get the answers. It's a pretty smart idea if you ask me. Now this one that I made only does addition. If you want nomographs for things other than addition, you have to get smart about how you draw things. Actually, you can do multiplication if you just use the addition one but make everything a logarithmic scale. Here, check it out. 2 times 4 is 8. And 5 times 2 is 10. It really works. To get other functions, you can change the scale like I just did. You could also move the middle line around so it's not perfectly centered. That would change the function. Or you can make the lines non-parallel or even curved. There used to be lots of people interested in techniques for creating nomographs. It was like a whole discipline in mathematics, which has basically disappeared today. Here's one that I love for solving the quadratic formula. It comes from an old nomography book from 1923. So let's look at these ones that I have. This is a galvanometer circuit nomograph, which is used to solve something about galvanometer circuits, I guess. A galvanometer is some kind of machine, I guess. Measures some kind of something. Galvanometer. Here's the equation here, which the thing is solving. Looks a little complicated, but actually it's just dividing. I think it's just Ohm's law, but what do I know about electronics? This nomograph was printed by Honeywell, which was a major manufacturer of lots of stuff, including galvanometers. It's a nice plastic card. It looks waterproof, which is great for all your underwater circuit testing. On the back, we get a big chart, which doesn't make any sense at all to me, but it's fun. Hey, look, this column assumes zero source impedance. I mean, I know, right? I'll put a link to a scan of this one in the description down there so you can play around with it if you want. Here's another one printed by Shell, which is an American gas station. It's the Shell Nomograph Mileage Calculator. This one was supposed to be used to keep track of how many miles your car could drive using one gallon of gasoline. You look at how many gallons you used, and then how many miles you drove, and this line over here tells you how many miles per gallon you got. So if I drove 148 miles and I used 9.5 gallons, 
I line them up here and here, then my answer looks like about 15 and a half miles per gallon. I had to just eyeball the numbers there. The real answer for those numbers is 16.4, which is actually pretty different. So maybe I should have been more careful. The best way to do this is not with a ruler like I'm doing, but with a super thin piece of string. Anyway, this chart is also just dividing, but they don't show the equation on here. They don't want to give away the secrets. This thing is less durable than the Honeywell one. It's just cardboard, but it seems to have held up pretty well. The other side has a little chart you can use to write in your statistics over time, plus some hot tips for good mileage. It says, do not exercise the gas pedal. I don't think I'd do that. I really like these things because of how hyper-specific they are. All this one does is divide numbers, but you can only divide numbers from 100 to 480 by numbers from 8 to 24. Anything other than that, and you're out of luck. Same goes for this one. You can't use this for anything other than exactly what they laid out for you. So as a general purpose device, this has got to be one of the worst calculators ever. But for that one specific task that it was designed for, it's really uncommonly great. It's very simple to use, requires no calculations in your head. You don't have to type in numbers on buttons. It can't jam or break, because it's just a picture, really. It's a chart that calculates. It's weird. People these days think that a calculator has to have electronics or at least some kind of moving parts. You know, the device needs to be somehow active. There needs to be some process in motion to produce the answer. Either the inside of the machine moves or you move the machine or some combination of the two. But it doesn't have to be that way. This thing is just a picture. The picture is a computer. Computer.